Hey guys, Vladimir here with Desktop Makes. I know, it's it's been a while since we last saw each other, but I'm back and I've got some great videos lined up for you. I wanted to kick things off with a very valuable Fusion 360 lesson. In fact, I consider this to be one of my biggest aha moments when first learning Fusion 360. And after figuring this out, it launched me into a whole new level of being able to approach my designs in a way more efficient manner and to be able to create designs that don't fall apart whenever I need to come back later and make a design change. I'm sure you've been there. You spent hours perfecting your model and then decide to make a slight tweak and it's as if someone took a sledgehammer to your design. I find that I come across people who have been using Fusion 360 for years and still don't understand this concept or just simply fail to implement it and therefore cause themselves much needless headaches. So what am I talking about? Sketch constraints. Understanding how to use this little toolbar and how it works is going to be the key to fully grasping the power of Fusion 360 and in being able to design whatever you want. So I put together this quick example to show you why grasping this concept is so crucial. I also made a free sketch constraints cheat sheet that you can download by clicking on the link below. It shows each sketch constraint with a brief explanation on how it works with an image to demonstrate how to use it. You'll want to download it and save it to your desktop or even print it out and tape it to your wall. As you'll find, it'll be a handy resource to have whenever starting a design. I'm also going to devote the next few videos on sketch constraints and how to effectively use them. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss them. All right, let's jump into the lesson. When I first started using Fusion 360, I tended to stay away from sketch constraints. I didn't really understand them, so I would just go ahead and dimension my parts as needed. However, I later realized how important these constraints are in making sure that if I need to come back later and make changes, that my model doesn't completely break on me. I'm gonna show you a simple and quick example here just to demonstrate how powerful designing with constraints is. So here we have um, this, this flat washer, but the design intent behind this is that this hole here has to always be in the middle of the washer. So no matter what size I make this, that hole has to remain in the center. So let's look at two approaches to designing this. The first is to simply dimensioning it. So I'll create a new design and I'm going to create a sketch here on my XY plane. I'm going to grab my rectangle tool. And I'll start a two point rectangle here right on my origin and I'm going to make this 50 by 50 hit enter and then I'm going to bring in a circle. So I'll grab my circle tool here and let's make the circle outside here first make it 25 millimeters in diameter and then I'll bring it in here um, somewhere you know close to where I want to put it on the center and I'll simply dimension it in place so I know that my rectangle is 50 by 50 so I'll hit D for dimension click on the center of the circle in the top line and since this line is 50 millimeters well I want that circle in the middle so I'll make it 25 millimeters from the top I'm gonna do the same thing from the side so click on the circle I'll we'll click on the side here and make that 25 millimeters. Okay, now I know that my circle is exactly on the center, 25 millimeters from each side. Click on Finish Sketch, select my profile, E for Extrude, and I'm going to extrude this 5 millimeters. And there we have it. It's exactly what I want. But let's say I come back and I want to change the size of this. Let's say I want the width of this washer to be 100 millimeters. Well, I'll go ahead and double click on the sketch to edit it. Click on this width here, make that 100 from 50 and you can see what happened there. The circle continues to stay 25 millimeters from this edge because that's where we dimensioned it from. So I'll click finish sketch and you see it's no longer in the center. So then I'd have to go back into the sketch and redimension this circle to make it go back to the center again. Not that big of a deal with this example because it's a simple example but you can see where your designs start to get more complicated how this can get tedious. So let's approach this a different way. I'm going to create another sketch here and I'm going to create that same design, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, instead of using dimensions, we're going to use constraints. So there's my rectangle there and I'll create my circle here and I'll move it close to where I want it here. And this time we're going to use one constraint here, which is our horizontal slash vertical constraint. 
and I'm gonna click on the center point of my circle, hold shift, find the midpoint of this right edge right there, and do the same thing with the top, find that midpoint there, and now that circle is perfectly constrained in that center without using any dimensions. So now look what happens if I click on finish sketch, let me extrude this, and now we'll go back to that original sketch, decide that we wanna make this 100 millimeters wide, change that length, the circle stays right at the center and it updates my design. You know, do the same thing with the height here. Let's bring this down to, let's say 30. The circle continues to stay right at the center there. I could even change the diameter of that circle, bring it down to 20 and it'll continue to stay right at the center. So you see the idea here. Now this is a simple example just to get the point across, but as your models begin to get more complex, designing with constraints is gonna make it a lot easier to come back later, make changes without your models breaking on you. So go ahead and download my PDF cheat sheet of all the Fusion 360 constraints. It's gonna show you each of these constraints. It'll have a little graphic and a description of exactly how they work. You can place it by your computer or tape it on your wall so that when you're designing, you wanna slowly begin incorporating these constraints into your design. And you'll see how more efficient it's going to make you in creating your designs. And also how it's gonna remove a lot of the frustrations that happen later on when you come back and make changes and everything just breaks on you. These constraints are a really powerful feature in Fusion 360, so you definitely don't want to overlook them. All right, I hope you found this little mini lesson helpful. As I said, this was a simple example to demonstrate my point, but the idea is very powerful and will save you hours of frustration as your models become more complex. Make sure to get the constraints cheat sheet by clicking on the link below and slowly begin incorporating it into your designs. As I'm preparing some new videos for you, if there's any topic you'd like me to cover, simply leave it on the comments below. And if there's a specific sketch constraint that you're finding difficult to understand and would like me to do a video on, I'll leave that in the comments below. Okay, I'll be back in a few. See you then.